Hello there, tankers, and welcome to the fourth episode of Why You're Bad. I have to say I'm pretty productive these days, and I'm not gonna lie, the lockdown in France is pretty helping. The ideal situation would be for me to finish the series before the lockdowns, and but only time will tell. I'll see where the series take me and how far I can venture in the guise. Today's topic is not especially a noun from the player base, but I think that a lot of people don't understand the potential of this tool. So I'll try to go as deep as possible for you to know and learn as much as possible. Why you're bad number four? You don't use your binoculars. Binoculars are a very simple tool in the game, and yet a lot of people often overlook them. They mainly help you to spot your enemies easier, but they are a little more useful than that. First things first, I would suggest you to remap your control key for binoculars to be able to reach the button easier than the default one. By default, your binoculars are mapped on B, but it's really not handy to have to reach the B key while you're driving. Personally, I bind them on A, but since I'm French, I have a French Azerty keyboard, so for an English QWERTY keyboard, it would be the Q key. Having the binos so close to your movement keys is really enjoyable and handy when you want to scout the target very quickly, or when you're in a light tank. I hear some of you say, but Barker, why would I ever want to use my binoculars when I can use my gun scope? And in high tiers, my gun scope has more magnification than my binoculars. That trash. Fair enough. But to this I say, stop talking without thinking and listen. They are better for a few reasons. The first reason is the field of view. Let's jump into the Centurion Mark 10 as an example. As you can see, the binoculars and the gun scope have roughly the same magnification, so indeed. Why would you want to use one and not the other? Let's compare both views. If I aim this building, I can see my target, but my field of view is restricted by the black circle around my crosshair, which can make me tunnel visioning, which is very bad. On the other hand, if I use my binoculars, I have a much wider field of view, and I can scan a wider area without having to move my mouse. Binoculars 1, scope 0. But some of you may say, well, easy, I just have to play the Japanese Type 89. His scoped field of view is the whole screen, and I have a ludicrous zoom to spot farther targets. Okay, sure, that could work. Except for another important mechanics. Try this at home. When aiming with your gun scope, try to turn your turret 90 degrees to the left or right as fast as you can. Now try with your binoculars. As you can see, the scope is limited by the screen and you can't turn it as fast as you can. The binoculars on the opposite are only limited by the size of your mouse pad and your mouse sensitivity. Fun fact, you can accelerate how fast you can turn with your binoculars by holding the free loop key, which is C by default. Also, thanks to the free loop key, you can aim your binoculars without even having to turn your gun. Just roughly aim in free look as if the white reticle was in the middle of your screen and press the bino key. Cool, right? Finally, your scoped elevation and depression are limited by the elevation and depression of your gun. If your gun cannot go lower, your scope also won't. The binos have much higher elevation and depression angles, which will be perfect when paired with the next point. As you just saw, the field of view of the binoculars and how quickly you can turn your camera is a pretty big advantage for them. And even if in higher tier the magnification is less than on your scope, I assure you that sometimes it's better to take a step back to see the bigger picture than have a 20 times magnification on a very small area, even if sometimes it can prove to be useful. But binos have another asset in their sleeve. Something that players tend to forget, or I'll try not know, is that the binocular view is placed on the top of the commander's cupola, which means that you can literally see and spy people while being behind a ridgeline without even being noticed or shot. Let's take a look. Here we are on Maginot Line and I'm driving my CV90 105 TML. As I'm flanking on the right side of the map, I can scout targets over the ridge line with my binoculars without having to fear any shot or being detected. This is even more efficient as the CV90 has commander thermal, so I can really spot targets in the blink of an eye. I just have to look for a twinkle on my screen. Lastly, the final advantage of binoculars. This one is very, very situational, but I guarantee you that you will thank me for teaching the trick to you. After years and years of playing War Thunder, I almost never see people pulling this trick. 
even if it's extremely useful. Do you know what a bino shot is? Let me explain. On very rare occasions when you're posted on a ridge line and when using a gun with a relatively low muzzle velocity and if your target is far enough, you can pull off what is called a bino shot. I can only advise you to check Mike Goes Boom's video on the subject, I'll leave a link in the description. As I mentioned, the bino view is placed on top of the commander's cupola, above your tank. By zeroing your gun at the correct shot distance, it is possible that your gun will shoot above the ridge, but your shell will drop enough to hit your target. Since it's quite rare to pull off this technique, I'm here in a custom game on Maginot Line with my Swedish SAV. The SAV is a very good example for this trick. Its main shell has low enough muzzle velocity to drop quickly and it's a relatively low tank, so even more efficient for this task. I'm here behind this ridge line and let's assume I want to shoot this house. It's about a thousand meters away from me, so I first have to zero my gun. As you can see, I cannot see the house in my scope, but thanks to the placement of my binos, I can see it over the ridge line. Also note that the gun reticle is showing over the ridge line. I then just have to aim the house with my binoculars, click on the fire button, maintain it, and then go out of the bino view. That's a hit! And if for whatever reason that house was equipped with a cannon, it could have never shot me back. Neat technique, isn't it? Well, that's pretty much it, guys. I try to keep these videos as short as possible without omitting anything, so if you guys want to watch them again, it would be less of a pain to find what you wanted to see again. As usual, feel free to leave a comment to propose any ideas for later topics, or to tell me if I have forgotten anything. In the meantime, be safe, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one.